Right, hello and welcome to Lurker Park here in East Hanover, New Jersey. Zach Smolin alongside Michael Mimis here to bring you the final broadcast of the season for the New Jersey Nationals. And that's all the Nationals, not just the 16U. The 18U had their final game earlier today. They won 2-1 to one against USA Elite in a five-inning ball game at the Showcase down in North Brunswick Community Park in North Brunswick, New Jersey. And now to keep the theme of towns with <laughs> directions in their name we're here in east hanover new jersey so michael you saw these nationals uh play yesterday and you said that they had another victory extending their winning streak tell us a little bit about yesterday's game well yesterday's game they were down four to one uh they had conti start the game and he pitched pretty well but there was some hard contact made by the other team and then they just started hitting they straight started stringing hits together there were guys on they were hitting in runners in scoring position and and they ended up shutting down the rest of the lineup with uh, Bartolomeo and Adubato. And now if they win today, they're going to move to 500 for the fall, which obviously is not the best record, but it's a nice accomplishment, especially when you were four games below at one point. Well, yeah, they had that big six-game losing streak, then bounced back in a big way. Uh, in Newark on Tuesday, they had that enormous victory where they put up 15 runs, 15 nothing win for them. It was a big game for them. Drew a lot of walks, got a lot of base hits, and... Timely defense and excellent pitching, and, you know, that always equates to a solid performance out there. And a guy that this team always seems to get a solid performance out of is on the mound right now, Dylan Martling. Martling has been the ace of this staff, always to be counted on. And, Mike, you've seen him a couple times. What do you think about Martling? Martling's a good pitcher, and he, he really does, you know, as he goes on, doesn't seem to he doesn't seem to tire, which is a very key thing among pitchers, and pretty good control as well. And, you know, even when the guy, people, players do hit it, you know, let the field make the play. Um, you know, doesn't need to strike out every guy. And, you know, he's just he's a solid guy for them, uh, especially with Conte pitching yesterday. Not really going to be starting today. Having Martling start is a good decision. 2-1 and one with a save, 21 innings pitch, 20 strikeouts, only 11 walks, 16 hits, and only three earned runs. So Marling is ready. Rodriguez is ready. Let's do it here in East Hanover. First one is slapped through the hole on the left side, and, in for a base hit, so Ricky Rodriguez, the leadoff batter for the Legends, wasting no time here and getting the party started with a base hit over through that left side. Let's meet the entire Legends lineup. Ricky Rodriguez, the second baseman, leads off. Ethan Young is in right field, batting second. The three-hitter, Andrew Wiener, is in center field. Dylan Gnecco cleans things up. He will pitch today with Oliver Colhenny, the extra hitter, batting fifth. Continue the lineup in just a moment as Dylan Martling comes set, delivers, and misses downstairs for a ball, count 1-0. Riley Moses, the third baseman, is in the sixth spot with Eli Cohen, the shortstop, batting seventh. The first baseman, Jake Wiener, bats eighth. Batting ninth is Bryce Megden, the backstop, and rounding out the order is Grant Nikolski. He will play left field. Next offering from Martling is low and away, the count now 2-0. So Ethan Young at the plate. The last time these two teams played, he was 0 for 2 with a walk and a run scored. And the 2-0 pitch is hit on the ground and threw on the right side for a base hit. So Aiden Kearns picks it up, fires it in real quick, and back-to-back -back base hits for Rodriguez and Young, and the Legends cooking early in the top of the first with two men on. Two quick hits for... The legends, but interesting thing I noticed when the ball went in the outfield, kind of both times it slowed down a lot. So it could be something to watch when a ball goes into the gap. Maybe it's not going to go, not really roll as far. A little bit of taller grass. Grass a little thick out there in the infield as well. This pitch a curveball right on the outside edge for a strike count 0 and 1. Andrew Wiener, the center fielder, was 0 for 2 with a walk and a couple of strikeouts. Also scored a run when these two teams played up in Weequiac Park in Newark a couple weeks ago. Next offering for Martling, a fastball strike on the outside edge, and the count quickly 0-2. A little bit of a windy day. Uh, we saw a little bit of rain earlier, so we'll see also how that affects uh, any any of the game. We expect it to possibly rain in and out throughout this game, but not too hard. Marling double takes on the runner at second. Here's the 0-2, goes with the fastball, strike three, freeze frames him right at the knees, and that's out number one. And that's what happened to... Andrew Wiener, the last time these two teams played, he's now struck out in three of his four plate appearances against the Nationals this season. Speaking of Nationals, here's a former National, Dylan Koneko, going to step up to the plate. He's got two men on and just one away. Ground ball can get Martling out of this inning. 
kicks and fires a first pitch curveball. Nice block there by Matt Muller. Keeps it in front. The count 1-0. Let's meet the Nationals defense. Nick Weaver in left. John Muller in center. And Aiden Kearns over in right field. Danny Reyes at the hot corner with Anthony Bibbo at short. Liam Cavanaugh at the Keystone and Sam Michelle over at first base. Behind the plate is Matt Muller. And delivering this pitch is Dylan Martling who nails the strike zone right there on the outside edge. Count even at 1-1. One one. And Young not being held on at first. Rodriguez taking a pretty decent lead off the back at second about 12 feet off. And Martling from the stretch is 1-1, one, one, is tapped over to second. It's a slow roller. They might only have one play. Kavanaugh fires to first to get his man, but both runners advance. There's two away, and now two runners in scoring position for the Legends. Yeah, and possibly could have gone to, to the second base there, but just take the safe out. It's two, so as long as they get this guy out, it really doesn't make a difference. Uh, they weren't really going to turn two on that one. And uh, sacrifice fly, a fly ball doesn't really mean anything because you can't hit a sacrifice fly with two outs. But two in scoring position nonetheless. Your point correct, though. They will have to get it through and hit some real estate in order to bring the runs in. First pitch from Martling now to Colony is down and outside in the count 1-0. and And the Legends, they look like the Dodgers out in the World Series. They have the wedding cake white jerseys with Legends written across the front in that Dodgers blue font. This one is popped up into shallow center field. Calling everybody off is Muller, who makes the grab but loses his hat for the final out of the inning. So the Legends get the bats going early but have nothing to show for it. No runs on two hits, no errors, and two men left aboard at the end of half an inning. Scoreless tie with the Nationals coming to bat in the bottom of the first. You're listening to 16U NJ Nationals Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. I mean, we'll probably stay together. Probably? <laughs> it's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and Ad Council. America, your children have an amazing superpower. That's right. They can help save lives by simply washing their hands. Just 20 seconds of thorough hand washing after they've coughed or sneezed or been outside can help fight against the dastardly spread of germs. Armed with only soap and water and hands, your superhero can protect you, your family, and everyone out there in America land. Amazing. Find out more at coronavirus.gov. A message from the CDC and the Ad Council. Welcome back here. Scoreless tie. Dylan Kaneko on the mound for the Legends. And he pitched against the Nationals a couple weeks ago. Had a great game through seven innings, a complete game. Allowed four earned runs on six hits, two walks, but 13 strikeouts. He ended up taking the loss of that game 5-4, to four, but really showed his stuff through over 100 pitches and really had good command of the strike zone. And he'll have another shot against this Nationals team as John Muller, the center fielder, will lead things off. Neko kicks and fires and misses outside with a fastball count 1-0. Here's the entire Nationals lineup. Muller, who's at the plate, is the center fielder leading off, followed by the second baseman, Liam Cavanaugh, who bats second. Anthony Bebo, the shortstop, hits third with the left fielder, Nick Weaver, cleaning things up. And Muller fouls this one back into the backstop, 1-1. One one. Aiden Kearns in right, bats fifth. Danny Reyes at third base is in the sixth hole with the seventh hitter. Anthony Alva is following him up as the extra hitter. Matt Muller, the backstop, is in the eighth spot with Dylan Martling, the pitcher, batting ninth. In the ten hole is Sam Michelle, the first baseman, and batting 11th is the extra hitter, Brian Conti. One ball, one strike from Ganeco, who kicks and delivers, misses high and outside, and the count now 2-1. and one. The Nationals in their black jerseys with Nationals written across the front in a modified cursive in white with the Carolina blue trim, also with a number on the bottom left and on the back, very large, and 
the same font and colors with white pants and Carolina blue socks with some white and navy blue stripes as Muller fouls that back and the count even now at two and two. And the black uniform, it's a little bit of a warmer, just, just black compared to light blue. Not much, but with the cold day, it can't hurt to have your uh, darker uniforms. 2-2 to Muller, lined right up the middle and above the glove of Gineco into center field for a base hit. So much like the Legends did, the Nationals get their leadoff man aboard, and now one man on, nobody out. Here comes Liam Cavanaugh. And a good piece of hitting by Muller that time, lining that one right up the middle. Gets everybody ready for Cavanaugh. Cavanaugh is 6 for 22 with 10 walks, though. He also has himself a couple of extra base hits, two doubles. Ready, righty matchup. This one is skimmed high and foul over on the right side. The first baseman, Wiener, is under it, but it falls behind his glove, unable to make the catch. Pretty big foul territory in third and first base. Yeah, there is a fence there, but uh, we'll see a couple of foul balls that maybe in other, other places would get out of play. They could be in play. It's a very big field. This is the East Hanover High School baseball field. Very deep to center. No dimensions, though, marked by any sort of distance marker. As Kavanaugh takes one, and the count now one ball, one strike. And Kavanaugh was not at the, was not in the lineup yesterday, uh, but he usually does bat in this position in the lineup. As this one has popped up, Fallon just behind the parking lot. And the count now one ball and two strikes. Muller does have seven steals on the season, has not been caught. He and his brother are both very fast on the base paths, and he's taking a big lead over at first base, about 12 feet off the bag. Being held on by Wiener and looked back over by Gineco. Let's meet the Legends defense. Grant Nikolski is in left with Andrew Wiener in center as this one is diced over to right field, giving Chase's Ethan Young the right fielder, and it tips off his glove in foul territory. So, well, we met Ethan Young on the run there in right field. Riley Moses is at third base. Eli Cohen is at short with Ricky Rodriguez at second. Jake Wiener is at first base with Bryce Magden behind the plate. And Dylan Gineco is on the mound in a 1-2 count against the right-hander Liam Cavanaugh. Again, Muller with a big lead in. Well, Gineco noticed it as he tosses over. Muller's back in time, and we have to wait just an extra half second for the 1-2. And from the stretch, Muller goes. The throw is low, or rather the pitch is low. The throw is also low, goes in on one bound. And now Kavanaugh with a 2-2 count. And Muller into second base with his eighth steal of the season. Muller, you know, speed threat everywhere. I, I believe he's second on the team in stolen bases behind just the guy on the, at the plate. 2-2. Swung on. This one is hit to straightaway center field coming in on it is Wiener who makes the grab and puts him down. Four out number one and Muller tagged from second base, got a great jump. Surprised to see him going on that shallow fly ball but excellent heads up base running by Muller to get himself from second to third. Yeah, immediately when that ball was caught, Muller was off. He wants to get to third and with one out, now he could score on a ground ball possibly or another fly ball. And here's a guy that's been getting going lately is Anthony Bibbo, 5 for 28 on the season, 10 walks and 6 runs batted in. Would like to make that 7 here with the runner on third base. The first pitch to the left-hander misses outside and the count 1-0. Bibbo had an excellent day yesterday, he got in all four times, three of them walks, and he also made a great play in the field. The ball looped over the pitcher and he barehanded it and got a guy at first from the shortstop position. Here's the 1-0, and that's right there at the knees for a strike count. One ball and one strike here. Lefty-righty matchup with the speedy Muller over at third base. A ground ball to the right side or a fly ball to the outfield. Brings in the run as the fastball right on the outside edge is in for a strike in the count now. One ball and two strikes. So the Summit New Jersey native continues to dig in the box and getting set and ready to go against the former national Gineco. And the one-two. 
Curveball is hit to the right side. That could score the run. Second baseman Rodriguez bobbles it, fires to first. Enough in time to retire Bibbo, but the run comes in to score. It's an RBI ground out for Anthony Bibbo as Muller crosses the plate, and the Nationals have taken an early 1-0 lead. Immediately after that bobble, Muller went home. Uh, just making sure that wasn't an immediate throw home, but easily made it there. And Nationals get on the board first, which is key to any game, getting scoring first. And Rodriguez seems a bit shaken up over there at second base. No coach has gone out to talk to him, but Ganeko and Jake Wiener are out over, seeing if he's okay. And he appears to be fine. Unusual to see the pitcher go out and check on an infielder, usually the other way around, but Ganeko a good kid, checking on his defender. And Rodriguez right now looks just a bit more frustrated than anything else, maybe that he bobbled that ball. Yeah, I didn't see anything that would be something hurt, but it's more like, you know, pick, pick me a uh, pick-me-up kind of, you know, you know, you got this. So now Weaver comes up, right-hander takes a curveball that flutters in high in the count 1-0. and oh. Looks like it's starting to rain again. As the next pitch in the dirt skips up high against the tall backstop. Two balls and no strikes to Weaver. Weaver has 40 plate appearances, nine walks, five for 31 on the season, 11 strikeouts, 11 runs scored, six steals, and three driven in. Comes up with the bases empty and two away. Next offering to him is a fastball low and outside for a strike in the count now, two and one. So Weaver all the way up in the cleanup spot. We've seen him bat second, we've seen him bat fifth. Now in one of the prime lineup positions. Here for a 16U squad as he swings and misses at an upstairs fastball on the count now, two balls and two strikes. So Ganeko, even though he took the loss in the last game for the Legends, as this one upstairs, count three and one, showed that bend but don't break mentality. He would give up one run here, one run there, but never a big inning. Three balls, two strikes, two outs. Base is empty. Weaver at the plate. The payoff pitch is lifted in the air to left center field, and that's going to split the gap between the outfielders for a base hit. Weaver on his high horse from first. He's going to dig into second. He gets there standing up. It's a two-out double for Nick Weaver, keeping the inning alive for the Nationals. That was just at Weaver's sweet spot. It was right over the plate. He really wanted like that one, but... I mentioned the, in the top of the inning, uh, the grass is a little slow. It was only like three bounces in the outfield before it just stopped for the outfielder. But we were fast enough to still motor on into second. And right, right about now, I'm happy that I bought the Apple Care, my new laptop, as the rain <laughs> is starting to come down a little bit more. Here comes Aiden Kearns to the plate with a man on second base and two away. First offering to him, tried to spin the curveball, but missed way high in the count 1-0. And Kearns, 8 for 27 on the season with eight walks. He's also been hit twice and leads the team with eight runs batted in. Next pitch to Kearns, fastball right on the inside edge. And the count now, one ball and one strike. Kearns, another left-hander, the second left-hander the Nationals have sent up so far in their first five batters, trying to keep the lineup somewhat staggered early as... Ganeko takes a little bit off on the next pitch. Misses outside. Count now 2-1. and one. And Weaver with some speed over there at second base. Won't swipe third with the left-hander up in two outs, but could score on a base hit. Gets a huge secondary as this one is lifted in the air high to right center field. Calling everybody off is Andrew Weiner, who makes the grab and puts him down for the final out of the inning with the Nationals. Get themselves on the board. One run on two hits. One man left the board at the end of one. Nationals won. Legends nothing with the Legends. Coming to bat in the top of the second. You're listening to 16U NJ Nationals Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when it happened. There was a sudden jolt and our submarine crashed on the seafloor. We were in total darkness. That's Dr. Dejana Figueroa, a marine biologist and STEM teacher, talking about a deep sea dive she'll never forget. It's funny, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the ocean, and there I was, two miles below the surface. But as a scientist, you prepare for that. Using our training and a little creativity, we fixed the sub and finished our experiments. The dive was just too important. Every dive gives us glimpses at things few people ever get to see. Glowing creatures, fiery undersea volcanoes, 
When we got back to the surface, I kissed the ground and called my mom, of course. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that dive for anything. Dr. Figueroa uses her passion for STEM to discover new things and make the world a better place. She can STEM, so can you. Check out She Can STEM for more stories and inspiration. A message from the Ad Council. Welcome back here. Moving some equipment around to keep it dry. Now got my laptop under my lap, which is under a table. And the Nationals rained down a couple hits the last inning and knocked in a run. So it's a one nothing lead now for Dylan Marley. He'll face off against Moses, Colin, and Jake Wiener as his first pitch plunks Moses. And he'll send him on over to first base. So back-to-back -back innings now for the Legends where they've sent their leadoff man aboard. Yeah, something to watch for this rain now is grip on the ball the landing spot for the pitcher, as well as the launching point for the pitcher, as well as just the balls getting kind of just batted down by the rain. First offering now is in for a strike to Eli Cohen, and the count now 0-1. And Cohen's last game, or Cohen rather did not play in the last game against the Nationals back in Weequiac Park. Next pitch is in for a strike on the outside corner. Well, he's gripping the baseball a little bit better now against Cohen, the count 0-2. Moses about nine feet off the bag over at first base. Now takes an extra step, and the throw over is not in time for Marling. So Moses trying to make Marling think about him instead of Cohen with the 0-2. We'll see if Marling goes with the off-speed after back-to-back -back outside fastballs. Right-hander sets, delivers. Nope, goes with the fastball, but misses away. Now one ball and two strikes. And a smooth drizzle coming down here it was... A small chance of rain, and well, it has arrived. Hopefully it doesn't stay for too long. And the one, two, look out, up and in. Does, does that curveball slipped out of his hand a bit, but Cohen able to duck out of the way. So now two balls and two strikes to the seven hitter of the Legends. And Martling's 2-2 is grounded sharply, but foul over on the first base side, and the count remains 2-2. Two two. Martling got all of his outs in the last inning from the stretch as he gave up a base hit on the first pitch that he threw. That was over to Ricky Rodriguez, and then allowed a base hit to the next batter as well. And now a runner on first by way of a hit by pitch, still looking for the first out of the inning. Runner breaks for second base, the pitch is low for a ball. The throw down from Muller was just offline over to the right of the bag. I thought it was going to be in time, but it wasn't handled by a Nationals defender. So now Moses on second with the stolen base and the count full. And Moses looked like he was itching to run. He kind of was looking over, looking over. He had a pretty nice lead, and finally he does go. A decent jump. Uh, throw just a little bit offline, or else he, they may have sna snagged him at second. New second baseman for the Nationals is Anthony Alves, as Kavanaugh is taking a... Turn on the bench. Next pitch is outside. Ball four. So a hit by a pitch. And then a walk. Back-to-back -back base runners for the second straight inning for the Legends. They're in business again. Top of the second now with nobody out and two men on. Now here comes Jake Wiener, the first baseman to the plate. Stands tall. It's a right-handed batter. First pitch to him. Swung on a miss on the upstairs fastball. A bit of a long swing for that inside pitch in the count 0-1. So the tying run in scoring position, go ahead over on first base. We'll see if they get aggressive and steal here, even with Moeller's arm. The next one is tapped right back to the mound and out rather towards shortstop, picked up by Bibbo on the slow roll, and Michelle can't handle it. He drops it. And Cohen now, or rather Wiener now, going to end up on first base. So a couple of mistakes, walks, hit, batters, and error, and the base is loaded for the Legends. I was a little surprised Bibbo didn't go to second there. He was running in front of it, but if he just stopped for a second, he could have flipped it back uh, to Alves. But end up going to first, and now his base is loaded. Nashville's going to put the corners in as the first pitch to Bryce Megden is in for a strike low in the count 0-1. Corners are in to cut off the run. Middle infielders are pinched back trying to get a double play. Still early with a 1-0 lead, so they'll trade the 
run for the two outs this inning. Next pitch, another curveball, a little high, but Megden swings at it anyway, and the count now 0-2. So Marling, although he hasn't had the best control of it, when he's spinning it well, these legends are not catching up to it. And the 0-2 goes for it a third time, but misses below the knees. One ball, two strikes. So Marling still in the driver's seat against this batter. Goes 1-2. Nice time with the two-seam fastball, but misses low and outside. Count now two balls and two strikes. And Marling needs a strikeout here with the bases loaded. Want to try to make sure the ball does not go in play. 2-2. Two -two. Strike three. Freeze frames them right there on the inside corner. And Marling picks up a big strikeout here for the first out of the top of the second inning. That pitch was right down the middle. I'm not sure what... Mengen was looking at, but uh, that was a pretty hittable pitch, but it was a very fast pitch as well, so I will give that. Mengen might have been sitting curveball after two straight fastballs. Could be. I guess we'll never know. First pitch, a curveball this time to Grant Nikolsky is cut on a miss for a strike count 0-1. Talk about swinging out of your shoes. That's kind of what it felt like. You just lunged at that one, and it was too low to really hit it. Corner infielders remain in for the Nationals to cut off that run as Martling just missed downstairs in the count one and one now to Nikolsky. And the Legends left fielder sporting some pink socks for Breast Cancer Awareness Month here in October. It's a good look with the Dodger colors as he swings and misses at the inside curveball. Martling, it's been a great pitch for him. He's gotten a ton of swing and misses on it already and now ahead in the count one and two. Base is still loaded. Here's the one-two pitch to the 10 batter in the order. Curveball, strike three. Right there on the outside corner. Catches him window shopping. And he's down for out number two after loading the bases with a hit batter, a walk, and an E3. Back to back strikeouts to the nine and 10 hitters. And now the Legends lineup flips over. Here comes Ricky Rodriguez. Martling just bearing down here. In the first inning, he, had he got into trouble and he started, he just became a filthy pitcher. And same as this inning. And he's loving pitching backwards right now. First pitch curveball in on the outside corner for a strike count 0-1. Getting a lot of swings and misses. Marling a good fastball pitcher, but a lot of confidence in his secondary stuff so far today. Goes with the curve again, and it's fouled back. And now Rodriguez down in the hole 0-2. Remember, Rodriguez one for one with a base hit. He swung at the first pitch of the ball game, and and a nice little line shot over into right field, or rather, over into left field. He had a hit to right field in the last game. That's what I'm seeing on the spray chart. 0-2, bases loaded, two out, strike three, cut on and missed. And Dylan Martling strikes out the side after loading the bases. No runs, no hits, one error, two free batters. And three men left aboard at the end of one and a half. Nationals up one nothing on the Legends with New Jersey coming to bat in the bottom of the second. You're listening to NJ Nationals 16U Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. America, your children have an amazing superpower. That's right. They can help save lives by simply washing their hands. Just 20 seconds of thorough hand washing after they've coughed or sneezed or been outside can help fight against the dastardly spread of germs. Armed with only soap and water and hands, your superhero can protect you, your family, and everyone out there in America land. Amazing. Find out more at coronavirus.gov. A message from the CDC and the Ad Council. No word. I'm going off on an Aerosmith rant here in East, Han East Hanover, New Jersey. Coach Mike Carter playing some walk this way. I'm talking about Tom Hamilton's bass playing. He's unbelievable. That whole band is filled with some great musicians. 
Got to see him live one time. Steven Tyler was amazing. Joey Kramer on drums. Of course, Brad Whitford on guitar. Not the actor Brad Whitford, the guitarist. And, of course, Mr. Joe Perry on the lead. That awesome solo here. And just like Aerosmith has a bunch of them, the Nationals looking to add some hits here in this inning in the bottom of the second. First pitch to Reyes in for a strike in the count 0-1. Not an Aerosmith fan, uh, Mike? Uh, I, mean, I, to some of their songs. I was just thinking of, like, what would be the, the fine genre for baseball in terms of pump-up music? I, I feel like it's between rock and country. Next pitch is tapped foul in the count 0-2. Uh, it, it, I think it just depends on the culture of the area. Baseball is such a dynamic and such an American sport, and, you know, the United States is a big-time melting pot, so whatever's the taste of the area, I feel like blends in perfectly. We listen to all sorts of different genres, and I was down in Leesburg, Florida. We played country, we played hip-hop, we played some rock and roll. We did a little bit of everything as Gnecco's pitch misses down and outside, one and two, and all of it blends in. As long as it's exciting and matches the tone of the game, I think it works well. Yeah, and even baseball, when advertising the World Series, did K-pop. One-two pitch, strike, three race. Looking outside, and he's caught looking for out number one. Here in the bottom of the second, Nationals up one nothing. Yeah, you even throw some K-pop in. That might also be because of the uh, the KBO, of course, when Major League Baseball got pushed back. That was big on ESPN. If you were bold enough to stay up till one or like four thirty in the morning, you could catch a little baseball action. Conecco's first pitch curveball. Frisbee's in for a strike on the outer part of the plate against Anthony Alves. Now in the count, zero and one. It was nice yesterday. I woke up early to get ready for the game, to game, uh, the 16U game, and K and uh, KBO was on ESPN, so I got to watch a live game in the morning while eating breakfast. And nothing like baseball around the clock as the next pitch misses now. Count one and one. Alves, four for 27, so looking to get going on the on the year. Six walks and six runs scored. Also a couple of runs batted in. So this one is popped up and behind home play, way out of play. And we'll have a one-two now to Alves. Nationals up 1-0 on the RBI ground out by Anthony Bibbo back in the bottom of the first inning. That scored John Muller, who led the game off with a base hit. And the 1-2 goes off speed and way upstairs, and the count evens out now with two balls and two strikes. Both teams with two hits. The Legends with a ton of base runners have left all five men they've put aboard on base. 2-2. Slow curve is outside. Alves holds up in the count full now. Three balls and two strikes. So Gnecco with one away. From the stretch, payoff pitch is swung on and lined right to the third baseman, but Moses is only able to knock it down. Fires to first, and it's low and gets away from Wiener all the way to the fence. But Alvey's not going to advance. It's going to take his base over at first. It's an E5 on the play. And the Nationals with their first base runner of the second inning. I thought initially that was actually going to be caught by the third baseman, but he ended up dropping out of his glove. I'm not sure if it just caught it and then dropped it or if it a uh, short hop. But either way, uh, tough throw for the first baseman to scoop up. And now a leadoff runner. And now Wiener holding Alvey's on over at first base. Matt Muller up at the plate. Apologize, a one-out runner. First offering is a curveball high in the count 1-0. Both pitchers starting batters off with curves a lot. Marling's been getting a lot more for strikes, though. Gnecco, though, with the better two-strike curveball so far today. And the next pitch to Muller. Swung on a miss. Galvez breaks for second. No throw, though. He's going to get second for free on the swipe back. And for Alves, according to our stat sheet, that's his first stolen base of the season. Didn't look too slow out there. Surprised he hasn't had another one, another attempt this season. But either way, he got he gets on he gets a steal and soaring position. One one is tapped into center field or shallow center field as Cohen ranges over right at the end of the infield dirt and makes the catch on the sinking line drive for out number two. A nice job by Cohen to get over there and. That'll send up Dylan Martling with a chance to help himself. Runner in scoring position in two away. Martling at the plate this year has done real well. Eight for 28, five walks, two steals, four runs scored, a double, and three driven in. First pitch, a curveball right on the outside edge for a strike in the count 0 1. Waiting on deck for the Nationals is Sam Michelle. They'll also send up Brian Conti and then flip the lineup over. 
Ganeko trying to stop the buck right here with Martling as he throws a curveball that breaks in nicely right by the hands. And all Martling can do is foul it back now, count 0 and 2. Good movement that time from Ganeko. That was the most lateral movement I've seen from his off speed pitch. Looked like it was going to hit Martling and then darted into the strike zone. No balls, two strikes, two outs, runner on second. Next pitch, a fastball right down Main Street, and Martling fouls it back. Stays alive in the at-bat now, count 0-2. Nice job by Muller fighting off the uh, two-strike count. Uh, staying alive until maybe it's a ball or a pitch he can actually hit into play. So again, another 0-2 count. For Gineco, fires, curveball, popped up over on the right side. Jake Wiener giving chase, and he's going to run out of room right over by the deep fencing over there. So a lot of foul territory over on the right side. Not as much over on the left. And he's unable to make the play either way as that wasn't hit as high as he needed it to be. So Martling took a strike and has fouled off three straight pitches in an 0-2 battle here with Ganeko with two away. Next pitch, cut on a miss, strike three. And that'll do it for the final out of the inning. No runs and no hits. One man left aboard on the error. And at the end of two, Nationals won, Legends nothing. With the Legends coming to bat in the top of the third, you're listening to 16U NJ Nationals Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. Um, we'll probably stay together. Probably? <laughs> it's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and Ad Council. Welcome back here. Nationals won. Legends nothing. Top three. Legends going to send up two, three, four. Young, Wiener, and Ganeko all to the plate. As Martling out for his third inning of work. Two shutout innings for him. A couple of walk, or rather one walk, one hit batter, and a couple of hits, but... No damage done so far has worked out of two different jams as this one is tomahawked high and foul over on the left side on that up and in pitch in the count 0-1. Martling had runners on second and third with two outs, got out of that jam in the first, and then bases loaded, nobody out, and then struck out the side to end the top of the second inning. Now the 0-1 curveball spins it, and it's grounded over to third base. Reyes picks it up, gets it off his chest, throw to first. Michelle's off the bag, makes the tag, and it's in time for out number one. So Reyes getting down and leaning over the baseball. That's what they teach you to do, not, not only be square to the ball, but also lean your chest area over in case the ball bounces up. He did just that, blocked it like a catcher, and was able to stay with it and fire it over to first. Now here comes Andrew Wiener, who taps the first pitch, a curveball foul back in the count 0-1. And nice job also by Michelle. He didn't try to catch it right away. He realized the runner was not really that close to the bag and that he could get off the bag and still tag him instead of you know having a tip off his glove. So a nice job all around. Not the cleanest of plays, but uh, still nice job of like backing yourself up. Hey, and outs and out. Ground ball over to short. Bibbo picks it up. He's going to have a long throw. Fires to first, and it's not going to be in time. He was deep in the hole, made a great throw, and only missed it by about a half step. A good work there by Bibbo to at least prevent it from going in the outfield. And the Legends have their first base hit since the first inning. So now that sends up Dylan Ganeko, who is 0 for 1 with a ground out. First offering to him, misses downstairs in the dirt, and the count 1-0. Oh. 
Let's see if there's any actions on the base pass. There's only been really one s attempt, s attempt st attempted steal by the Legends so far, but we've seen teams be aggressive on the Nationals running. This one is tapped over to third, right down the line, and foul. So race ranged over, and the ball just crossed that chalk line right before reaching the bag. Race was in front of it anyway. It would have been a tough throw to first, and evens the count out at one and one. Game about 40 minutes old here. We're in the top of the third with one out. Nationals holding on to a one nothing lead, but the tying run is on base. Runner breaks for second. This one lifted high in the air to left field. Weaver camping under it, and he makes the grab for out number two. Way off the bag was Wiener, who's going to have to trot back over to first. And now two away here in the top of the third inning. Yeah, Wiener going on that pitch, uh, but he realized right away that that ball would be caught, so he kind of just stayed a little bit past in between bases. And a quick pickoff move over to first, not in time. Oliver Cole, and he now steps to the plate. 0 for 1 with a shallow fly out over towards second base. And another switch over there at second. Liam Cavanaugh is now taking over there for Albies. They'll keep going back and forth. Runner breaks for second base. This one hitting the gap right in left center field and down for a base hit. Moeller picks it up, but it actually rolls between the two outfielders, and that's going to be trouble. Picked up by Weaver, runner rounds third. He's going to come in and score over to second base as Colony It's an RBI base hit for Oliver Colony, and now the game all tied up at one. A bit of miscommunication there between between Muller. I think he thought he thought that uh, that Weaver would have it. Because uh, then once it got past him, neither of them were going for it right away. And he gets a double on that play because it never went under anybody's glove or anything like that. It was just a mental mistake as Martley misses down and out in the count 1-0, although that should have been cut off. And the runner should have just been stuck at second, but now the batter at second base. And a chance to really advance him here. Next pitch is in for a strike. And the count, one ball and one strike. So Riley Moses up, he was plunked his first time. That was back in the second inning. That's how that inning got started, one one pitch. In the dirt and deflected way high and into the backstop. But Colony gonna stay over there at third base, so the count now two and one. Nearly went over that fence. It's a pretty tall fence we have in front of us, but that went very high, just a kind of weird deflection. Didn't result in anything, though. So it'll be a 2-1, the go-ahead run 90 feet from home. Still two outs, though. 2-1 pitch is down and outside. Muller unable to block it. Actually sticks into the fence, and the chain link hands it back over to Muller. The count 3-1. and one. So We saw this yesterday. A uh, ball gets stuck in the fence, and it is a dead ball. Advances the runners. Wow, I've never seen that. <laughs> I saw two games in a row. I can't believe it. <laughs> happened before. and uh, The runner was going over to first. I don't know why he did that. It's yeah, a 3-1 count. Shouldn't, unless it was a walk, he shouldn't be advancing. Uh, it just means the runner's advanced just like a balk would. Uh, oh, looks like they are bringing him back to third. Yeah, I have no idea what was going on with that play. So I didn't see it because yet. Oh, no, he is going but yeah, yesterday the ball got between like the bar and the fence, and it just stayed there, and it ended up being a dead ball, and it got the played to the Nationals with a runner. It was like second and third at the time. So now that one low for ball four. Moses gets over there. It's just interesting that that is constituted as a dead ball because I understand if it's stuck and it can't come out, but that one was barely in the fence. But I understand the rule. I mean, if it's under the fence or it's really jammed in, it's of no benefit to the catcher. First pitch to Cohen now, curveball low, and the count now 1-0. Legends now up 2-1 to one after that <laughs> bizarre scoring play. And Marling's got to find a way to work his way out of this inning. Worked his way out of a bases loaded, nobody out jam, but now just needing to put a period on the end of this sentence as he throws a fastball on the outside edge, count 1-1. One and one. Yeah, I had never seen that play happen when I played baseball, when I had watched baseball before, but I saw it two games in a row now. It's, like, it's the weirdest thing, the dead ball. 
Now Martling gets him to swing and miss at the off speed inside. Count one and two. Chance to end the inning here. Top three, Legends two, Nationals one. Two away, top three. Moses at first, coming at the plate. Next pitch, strike three. A fastball right on the outside corner. Catches him looking and sends him down for the final out of the inning. But the Legends get themselves on the board. Two runs on two hits, one man left on base. At the end of two and a half, Legends take a two to one lead here with the Nationals coming to bat in the bottom of the third. You're listening to New Jersey Nationals 16U Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when it happened. There was a sudden jolt and our submarine crashed on the seafloor. We were in total darkness. That's Dr. Dejana Figueroa, a marine biologist and STEM teacher, talking about a deep sea dive she'll never forget. It's funny, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the ocean, and there I was, two miles below the surface. But as a scientist, you prepare for that. Using our training and a little creativity, we fixed the sub and finished our experiments. The dive was just too important. Every dive gives us glimpses at things few people ever get to see. Glowing creatures, fiery undersea volcanoes, when we got back to the surface, I kissed the ground and called my mom, of course. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that dive for anything. Dr. Figueroa uses her passion for STEM to discover new things and make the world a better place. She can STEM, so can you. Check out She Can STEM for more stories and inspiration. A message from the Ad Council. Michelle Conti top coming up for the Nationals against Gineco for bottom of the third inning. First pitch curveball, Michelle out in front. Swings and misses in the count 0-1. Michelle, four for 18, a double, 10 Ks, five walks, two runs scored, four driven in, and a stolen base. First it's also one a double in there. Next pitch to him is his outside in the count, one ball, one strike. Michelle's got some big time raw power. When he times that ball correctly, if he gets a fastball, he can drill it to the pole side. Now one ball, one strike to the left-handed batter. This one's hit high in the air to center field. Going back on it is Wiener, and over his shoulder, makes the grab and puts him down for out number one. Nice play out there by Andrew Wiener. He's been playing a good center field today. Now it is the last game of the season, so there's Dick and Conti in the lineup today. Not that he doesn't hit, but he doesn't hit often. Just two for eight on the season. Hey, when he's been given the opportunity, he comes through. Yeah, he had his one appearance yesterday, and he got a hit. And then after that, he was trying to, you know, get Coach Carter to put him in the lineup today. Uh, so well, that's Kozak's job. <laughs> oh, sorry. No, you're good. Kozak uh, <coughs> to put him in the lineup, and he was able to succeed, so now he's in the lineup. Oh, one curveball. This one is laced to straightaway center field. Wiener's got to go back on it and just makes the play in time. He misread it. He took a couple of steps in before realizing how hard the ball was hit. Then was able to get back and reach up in time and able to secure that baseball for out number two. I was going to say, Conti, the 454 on base percentage. Five times up in 11 appearances. Now the lineup flips over. Here's John Muller. One for one with a base hit, stolen base, and a run scored. That's the exact line that you want from your leadoff batter going into his second at bat as the first pitch low and outside. The count one and zero. Oh. Thank everybody for tuning in, sharing your Sunday afternoon with us. We know there's a lot of football going on, but why not listen to some 16 new baseball? I always think that that's the superior choice as this one misses outside in the count two and zero, oh, especially given the state of the local football teams in the area. Two balls, no strikes. Muller at the plate. Next pitch to him is in for a strike on the outside corner. And the count two and one. The Giants on Thursday, we're talking about football, lost 22 to 21 in a game they should have won. They were leading 21 to 10 in the six minutes left in the fourth quarter. And then the Jets blew the lead today. They lost 18 to 10 to the Buffalo Bills. Now Muller takes one up and inside. Count now three and one. 
not too surprised about uh, either of those results. <laughs> no, unfortunately. <laughs> I, I was surprised about the Giants. I thought they were going to pull it out. They looked they looked good, and then they just they collapsed at the end. 3-1 to Muller. Is downstairs, ball four. So Muller on base for the second time in the ball game. And he's the exact runner that the Nationals like to have on base. Even though there's two outs, and here comes Liam Cavanaugh, who's 0 for 1 with a fly out to center field. So we'll see what Moeller does with two outs. He can probably go and grab second base. He's got a huge lead over there at first. And he's seen Ganeko's move before. There he goes, breaking for second. Pitches up and inside. Here comes the throw. It's going to be late. And it trickles into the outfield. Moeller picks it up and is able to hustle down over to third base. More good base running by Moeller. Calling the pitch a ball. Moeller gets over to second on the steal and then over to third base on the E2. Muller now tied for the team lead with Kavanaugh. And Kavanaugh looking to knock him in. He's got a 1-0 count with the runner on third. Curveball is sliced the other way and foul. Just going to miss the parking lot, but land by a small cohort of fans over there and some picnic tables. Hit the pole. Not 100% sure about that one, though. <laughs> and the count one and one. Muller a short lead off the bag at third base as the fastball sails up and away. Can echo a little frustrated with himself after that one. And the count now, two balls and one strike. Muller very fast. We'll see what happens with a wild pitch. It's not a far behind backstop, but Muller does. If he gets a good enough lead, maybe he does decide to test it. And the fastball low and outside. Count three and one. The only way I think he would score on a pass ball is if either it goes out of play into the dugouts or if it ricochets over towards the catcher's right because his backstop is really shallow here's a 3-1 and it's fouled into that backstop the count runs full three balls and two strikes last broadcast of the season for nationals baseball for games there's going to be a showcase for some of the players that are on their way to college to show off for some coaches that'll be in november that's going to be a different kind of broadcast, though, as this one is lined through the hole right up the middle and in for a base hit. So Kavanaugh comes through as Muller touches the plate and scores. It's an RBI single for Liam Kavanaugh, and the Nationals have knotted the game all up. It's 2-2. Two to two. Nice piece of hand there. He kind of just waited for it and waited so he could just kind of hit it in his spot from just, just out of the second baseman's reach. So now here comes the man for the Nationals that, has the, that had the first RBI for them, the first RBI of the game for either team. Here's Anthony Bibbo, and Kavanaugh takes off on the first pitch, but this one's going to be fouled backwards and out of play, so he'll have to retreat in the count 0-1. Yeah, we've seen the throw second. They've uh, either not been thrown or they've been bouncing ones, so Nationals are going to be a little bit aggressive on the base path to try to get guys in scoring position. No balls in the strike. This one lifted high in the air to center field. Wiener's been busy today. Takes a couple stumbling steps backwards, camps under it, and makes the grab for the final out of the inning, but the Nationals strike back and put up a run on one hit and leave one man aboard at the end of three, all tied up at two with the Newark, or rather just the Legends, coming to bat in the top of the fourth inning. You're listening to NJ National 16U Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. America, your children have an amazing superpower. That's right. They can help save lives by simply washing their hands. Just 20 seconds of thorough hand washing after they've coughed or sneezed or been outside can help fight against the dastardly spread of germs. Armed with only soap and water and hands, your superhero can protect you, your family, and everyone out there in America land. Amazing. Find out more at coronavirus.gov. A message from the CDC and the Ad Council. Welcome back here, top of the fourth, all tied up at two. Nationals 
Got their second run in off an RBI single by Liam Cavanaugh. It's going to be 8 9 10 for the Legends. Jake Weeder, Bryce Megden, and Grant Nikolski all coming up for Newark. And Weeder got on base the last time by an error. By the third baseman, I believe. Or no, it was rather by Michelle. As this one is grounded over towards second base. Picked up by Alvy is a smooth throw over to first base. No error that time. And Michelle puts a squeeze on it and sends him down for the first out of the inning. And as we've been doing, switching back and forth, Alvy's now over there at second base for Kavanaugh. And with one away, Martling deals, misses up and outside for a ball count 1-0. and And that was the voice of Mike Carter Jr. coming over to check my scorecard, or rather my iPad, with the scorecard to see what the score was. I was also pointing out Martling's pitch count. Casey was curious, and in case you're curious, this one is grounded over to second base again. Alves picks it up, fires the first big hustle this time by Megden, but not in time. So two batters, two outs, and that'll send up Grant Nikolsky to the plate. And as promised, here's Martling's pitch count. He's at 54, 35 for strikes. First one is low, so his 55th pitch results in his 20th ball of the afternoon. And the count 1-0 to Nikolsky is 0-1 with the strikeout. He was the second strikeout victim in that second inning where Martling, after loading the bases, struck out the side. 1-0 is down and out, 2-0. And, and the 2-0 pitch from Martling, fastball right there on the inside corner. Good location for that 2-0 pitch. And now the count, 2-1, and one. you want to challenge him on that inside corner because you don't want to just groove a fastball, 2-0. Goes to the same spot, foul back, count 2-2 two and two now. Colsky's stance a little bit leaning, like a little bit on the plate. So even that inside pitch uh, that kind of flinched back at still was a strike, uh, just kind of on the very inside corner. That's the peril of working inside, or rather being inside as a hitter. Juices wild, two balls, two strikes, two outs, and Martling misses downstairs. And the count filled up now, three and two. Top four, Legends two, Nationals two. With two away and a full count, Nikolsky, the final batter in the Legends order at the plate, swings and misses strike three. Dylan Marling, a strikeout machine today. No runs, no hits, nobody left on base as he sends them all down one, two, three to end the top of the fourth inning. Yeah, for Marling, that's already his sixth strikeout. 2-2 two -two game, bottom of the fourth. Nationals coming to bat. You're listening to 16UNJ Nationals Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. Um, we'll probably stay together. Probably? <laughs> it's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and Ad Council. I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when it happened. There was a... Back at it here, bottom four. Weaver, Kearns, Reyes, four, five, six, coming up for the Nationals. So they try to break this two to two tie. Legends with two runs in the third, and that's it for them. Nationals with one in the first and one in the third inning. Legends with four hits, two errors, six left. The Nationals with three hits, one error, and three men left aboard. Weaver, one for one with a long double to the left center field gap his first time up. Takes the first pitch curveball off the outside corner, and the count one and oh. And 
And another pitch by Gineco. This one has popped up in foul territory. This is going to hang high in the air. And it drops. It's like, a little uh, tough to see over to the right. I was right. able to see a little better position, but Wiener kind of overran it. Then he went, tried to go back. He dived for it and was not able to get it. Um, but, yeah, it is a little bit difficult angle for us to see those foul territories. Probably have a better view of third than me, and I have a little bit better view of first. <laughs> yeah, we're sitting behind home plate. I'm over on – I'm pretty much right behind home plate, and Michael's over a little bit more to the left. 1-1 one, one is a strike off speed on the outside edge, and the count now one ball and two strikes to Nick Weaver. Weaver's also made some nice plays out there in left field today. An all-around good game. We're looking to add another hit here. And Gnecco's 1-2. Curveball is hit in the air. This one's definitely going out of play. Foul. And bounces right before the parking lot. And we'll have another 1-2. Looks like it's starting to rain again. <laughs> it's all right. We're prepared for it now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we got all this stuff under. We got everything under the tables. One ball, two strikes, another pitch this time, a fastball. This is lifted in the air over on the right side. Plenty of room for Wiener, who hustles over, loses his hat, but collects the baseball and puts Weaver down for out number one. It's a little foul out. And, you know, that's been tough for, for him all day today for Wiener. He's missed a couple plays in foul territory, so it must feel good for him to, to have made that one. Of course, the other ones were far out of reach. Now Kern's up 0 for 1 with a fly out and sees a fastball up and away for a ball count 1 and 0. We're halfway through here. In the bottom of the fourth of the seven inning game is now a steady drizzle coming down here in East Hanover, New Jersey. 1 0. Good on a missed by Kearns on the up and outside pitch and the count 1 ball and 1 strike to him. It's times like this where the fielder's got to be happy that they're wearing hats and at least protects them from a little bit of the rain and the hitters' uh, helmets. Absolutely, I'm even going to put my hood up here. I already got a hat on. As Kearns hits this one foul, he dribbled it, uh, got on top over to the right side, and now one ball and two strikes to the Nationals' right fielder. Yeah, and uh, my warmest sweatshirt is this one. It's not a hoodie, so uh, I am not, <laughs> I'm going to let my hair get wet. I don't really mind. Uh, sure, uh, sure, it won't be too bad. Uh, listen, you could bring some, uh, you could bring some pantene, some tresemme, and you know, do your hair up nice right here outside. True. One two is hit hard, but foul into the backstop. And now the count will remain one and two. Again, Gineco, just like the last game, bending but not breaking. No big innings are allowed from him. A couple of one run innings, but he's come through when it's really counted with some big strikeouts today. He had 13 Ks in his last game against the Nationals. And so far today, he only has two. Next one, this one is dribbled right up the middle over to the shortstop, picks it up, clutches, fires to first. He's off the bag, and he's going to be safe. Kearns beat it out anyway, so he gets himself an infield single. But good hustle by the Nationals right fielder. That's their fourth hit of the ball game. And now the go-ahead run is on base for New Jersey. One, one of the best features for this national team is their speed. They, when they get on the base pass, they steal. And, you know, when there's a ground ball, it is a tough play for a fielder. They do have to rush it a little bit, and you saw... There, we got an infield single. And now here comes Danny Reyes, who struck out looking his first time up as Kearns has to dive back to the bag after a quick throw by Gineco. Ground ball ends the inning. A base hit could really be dangerous here, especially with Kearns over at first base. A large lead off the bag here. And Gineco steps off but does not throw over. Reyes, rare for a right-hander, has a close stance as the pitch is in for a strike and the count 0-1. Actually, just really rare for anybody. You rarely see that close stance, that front foot out closer to the bag than the back leg. Reyes has a lot of power. He hit a long one yesterday. And the ball gets through behind Megs, and that's going to be an easy advancement for Kearns off the wild pitch. As there wasn't that too much urgency for Megden to go and grab that one, with good reason. It's a shallow backstop, and there's no way he was going to get Kearns. So now the Nationals with a runner on second base. And that's the go-ahead run in scoring position. Reyes now seeing a fastball up and outside, count two and one. And no one really uh, shading over towards Kearns at second, so he can get a big lead, maybe even try to swipe third here. He's not 
the fast guy on this Nationals team, but he has some speed. Yeah, with the big lead, you can almost do whatever you want. Is the next pitch in the dirt count now three and one? Yeah. Neither Cohen nor Rodriguez are overshading behind him. Now it looks like Rodriguez might move over a little bit closer to at least keep Kearns honest over there. Rare to see a pickoff at second, but now Rodriguez at least close to the bag. 3-1 is outside, ball four. So Kearns gets on, and then Reyes following him up. Back-to-back -back base runners for the Nationals have him in business. Here comes Anthony Alves with a chance to give his team the lead. Yeah, definitely a steady rain. Michael, glad you brought this table today. <laughs> could help shelter all the equipment. That is true, yeah. Have my laptop, battery, and soundboard all under this table. Watch out, watch out. <laughs> this one fouled back, and the count 0-1. I really shouldn't be saying anything from the booth, but it almost hit someone walking by with an umbrella. Uh, a little bit of deflection. Well, at least they have the umbrella. That is true. It would probably block it. Now, they might have had a hole in the umbrella after, <laughs> but at least an umbrella to break something. That is true. Runners were breaking on the last one. Nationals had the hit and run. Let's see what they do this time. If there's a throw to second to keep Kearns over there. So no balls in the strike going to be to Alves after he fouled that one back. Then there was a the quick throw back to second base. 2-2 two -two tie ball game here in the bottom of the fourth with the steady drizzle going. It's only about 50 degrees here. This one up and inside and the count one and one. This actually is the exact conditions that we had last year for the final 16U game back in the fall season. It was cold and rainy, except I was in North Brunswick that time. And the parents actually brought me a tent, which I have, but I failed to bring today. 1-1. One, one. Runners going, and this one is belted high and deep to center field. Weiner ranging over, but it's going to drop in front for a base hit. Kern's going to round third and score. Ray's going to stop at second. It's an RBI single for Anthony Alves, and the Nationals now jump back ahead. It's 3-2. Runners had to hold up a little bit because Wiener was going towards it. It wasn't too far into the gap, so uh, ends up only being first and second rather than maybe uh, first and third. So now here comes Matt Muller, 0 for 1 with a line out, lined out to the shortstop. His first trip to the plate, hit one hard up the middle. First offering to him is a fastball up and inside. And the count now 1-0. and oh. Dylan Ganeko already had 80 pitches, just through three and the third. And the 1-0. Curveball dunks in at the belt for a strike. One ball and one strike now to the Nationals catcher. Race and Alves on the bags. That's second and first, respectively. Alves knocked in a run to make it a 3-2 contest. Next pitch, a curveball is hit high. Popped up behind home plate and foul. <laughs> and the count now one and two. Nearly hit us. Uh, we... <laughs> I didn't even see where it was, but then I saw it <laughs> just bounce to the end of the, the fence behind us. He almost got hit by a ball from a different field earlier today because the fields were so close together. Good news is it wouldn't hit any of the equipment because it's all under. It's all under the table, yeah, except my <laughs> iPad, but I'm guarding it. I'm actually leaned over it. Yeah, you're, it would hit your head. It probably hit your brim first. <laughs> That's okay. I have a hood and a hat on and a little bit of a headset. If it hits me in the right spot, it won't feel like much, <laughs> much at all. <laughs> this one hits low, and now the count two and two. Hey, you talked about, you know, grip with the rain coming down. We haven't seen too much of an issue, but that really, especially with young pitchers, is going to make it tougher for them to put that spin on their curveball. So we might see a lot more fastballs here if the rain continues to come down. I expect to see a lot of also switching of balls and, like, drying it with the shirt and all that stuff to try to keep it normal. So we saw it right there with that curveball that stayed high, and now the count three and two. Yeah, you might try. Although drying it with the shirt doesn't work because the shirt's also wet. That is true. But in your mind, you're like, eh, this, this is worth a shot. Bit, a little bit. <laughs> Definitely worth get a enough, shot. Get enough heat from rubbing it. And the payoff. Way downstairs. Bounces on the lip of home plate up against the backstop. Everybody will move up a base anyway with the Muller walk. And now the Nationals have themselves the bases loaded here in the bottom of the fourth. Already with a 3-2 lead in. The pitcher, Dylan Martling, now coming to bat with a chance to really bust this game wide open. And you saw another one that kind of bounced weirdly. That's uh, twice you've seen it, one for each team. Something to watch, especially if it's a throw to home maybe, um, or even anything with a like, runners advancing. Speaking of something to watch, a younger Nationals team has now come to spectate here. First pitch from Gineco is 
high curveball that's fouled into the parking lot. And the count 0-1. Just missed a car. Yeah, if anybody's parking... If anyone's oh, parking right there in front of, uh, right there behind the bleachers, that's that's dangerous. That's playing with fire. And the 0-1 is ripped into left field. Going back on it is Nikolsky, who's able to make the catch. Nice read out there by the left fielder for the Legends to prevent what could have been some serious trouble. Instead of a bunch of runs in and extra bases, now it's just the second out of the inning. So crank to that one to left. Everybody has to stay put. And now here comes Sam Michelle, 0 for 1 with the fly out. Left-handed batter with the cobalt blue bat. Looks at one for a strike on the outside corner and the count 0 and 1. Michelle drove one last time. It was part of an inning where every out was to the center fielder, but they were all pretty hit pretty well. 0-1. In for a strike again outside in the count 0 and 2. Yeah, the Nationals have been putting the ball in play pretty well. They do have three runs and five hits to show for it through three and two-thirds offensive innings, but they've had some situations and instances where they could have made it more. Bases loaded, two outs, bottom four. Pitch is grounded over to second base. Rodriguez dives and can't come up with it as it squirts into right for a base hit. Now Young drops it. One run scores, two runs in. Here comes Moeller to score. He's going to touch home. Over to second base is going Sam Michelle. So it's an RBI single by Michelle and then an E9. And the Nationals played all three men that were on base and doubled their lead now, or rather double their score to six to two. And like we always say, if you put the ball in play, good things will happen. So a big error right there by Ethan Young allows all kinds of things to happen. And Moeller, because of his speed over there at first base, able to come all the way around and come in. So now Brian Conti steps to the plate, who belted one to dead center field, but it took a spectacular catch by Andrew Weiner to bring it down. Conti basically all covered except for a little part of his just his eyes and nose, uh, covered up in this cold weather. This one fouled and actually goes into the Nationals' dugout. He had to hit that at the perfect angle to get it in there. And it makes the entire team flinch. Nobody was hit, though. And the count 0-1. So all the damage done with two outs for the Nationals. And it's their first big inning against Gineco this season as Michelle breaks for third. That's still in base number two for him on the season. The ball also got away from Conti in the count 1-1, one one, or rather got away from Megden. Two stolen bases, two days. Michelle and he's going out with a bang, being more aggressive on the base pass. Hey, last game of the season, pull out all the stops. Why not? <laughs> one ball, one strike to Conti. And he calls time. Trying to mess with Gnecco's rhythm, although you'd think they'd want to keep the game moving here with this freezing rain. Well, it's not freezing rain, but it is cold rain coming down. 1-1 one, one is inside and goes all the way to the backstop. Uh, Michelle going to stay over there at third. That bounced over to the left, so not as much space for Michelle to take advantage and hustle in. Now, if it would have went the same distance to the right, it might have been a different story. 21's the count, two out, bottom four. Nationals with a 6-2 lead after plating four this inning. Next pitch is belted in the air, <laughs> high and deep to right center field. That's going to drop for probably extra bases as it splits the outfielders. Conti rounds first, goes to second as Michelle comes in to score. It's a long RBI double for Brian Conti, who's proving that he probably should have been in the everyday line of every game this season, and now it's a 7-2 ball game. So Conti, you know, it's had three plate appearances since getting put in yesterday, or three hit, starting with getting put in yesterday. A line drive single to left field, a deep fly ball to center that did get caught, and then a, a gapper. I don't think he's going to be out of the lineup ever again. Well, unfortunately, it's the last game of the season, so we won't be able to capitalize on that momentum. That's true. Here's John Moeller. Lineup flips over, one for one with a base hit and a walk. First pitch is a spinning curveball by Ganeco right on the outside corner in the count 0 and 1. Ganeco at 95 pitches, and he's not even through four, so we might see another Legends pitcher coming later on. He's going to check on Conti over at second base, but nothing doing that time. Big inning for the Nationals. Five runs in as Muller scoops this one foul. Up to the large conglomerate of Nationals faithful. 
over on the right side behind the first base dugout in the count now 0 and 2. Conti on second, bottom four, two outs, 0-2 count to Muller, who's reached base twice. This will be the 97th pitch of the contest for Gnecco, who kicks and delivers. This one is taken the other way on the ground. Rodriguez has to range all the way over to his right, going to have to make a quick throw. Not in time as Muller beats out a ground ball the second for an infield single. So the Nationals just keep it rolling here in East Hanover, New Jersey, and keep piling on the hits. And the rain seems to have slowed down. Uh, we'll see if it picks up again. Uh, hopefully not. <laughs> yeah, the rain might have slowed, but the Nationals bats haven't. Five hits this inning. Here comes Liam Cavanaugh. One for two with a fly out and an RBI single. A Moeller still a threat to go with this five run lead. No lead ever safe. As Muller going to break for second. This one is grounded and very slowly over to shortstop. Cohen picks it up. Going to make the long throw to first. Not nearly going to be in time. And it gets under Wiener's glove and down over into first base foul territory. Kavanaugh is going to dig for second base as Muller advances to third. It's an RBI infield single for Liam Kavanaugh and an E6. And the Nationals pouring it on. It's 8-2. to two. And if Bibbo does, well, I guess they now will have batted around uh, if so we'll have to, uh, my scorecard has enough for one per inning, but we may end up with two per inning if Bibbo gets a hit here. Bibbo 0 for 2 with a ground out and a fly out. The inning started off with Nick Weaver stepping to the plate as Muller taking an aggressive lead off of third as the pitch misses low to Bibbo. Count 1-0. Yeah, this inning started off pretty innocently with Nick Weaver just grounding out over to first base and then Kearns, Reyes, Alves, and Muller all reached and all scored. Next pitch is high and outside. Count now 2-0 to Bibbo. This is it for the Nationals. No more games after today. They can get to 500 with a victory this evening. Two in scoring position with the six-run lead. Next pitch is a curveball that misses low, and that was the 101st pitch for Gineco. It was a ball. And the count now 3-0. I wonder how much longer they keep Gnecco out. They already had the coach visit this inning, um, and he has struggled. Uh, they ha he had two outs, and then he's given up four straight base runners since. The game plan might have been for Gnecco to go much longer. He pitched seven innings the last time as Bibbo takes one high and outside for ball four. Bases reloaded for the Nationals, and now the Legends coach going out to talk to his young right-hander. So that will probably be it for Gnecco. There's two outs. In the bottom of the fourth, bases are loaded again. All he needs is a ground ball, a fly ball, something. But it looks like that's going to end it for Gnecco. Let's see who they bring in. It looks like it's going to be Ethan Young, the right fielder. Well, we'll see what they end up actually doing. I don't see anybody. Well, actually, no, there is somebody out on the mound now. Actually, no, I think they made the straight switch. That looks like it's Eli Cohen who was playing shortstop for the team. And we'll tell you who it is and get everything sorted out right after these brief messages. We'll conclude the bottom of the fourth with two outs. Nationals leading 8-2 to two with the bases loaded. Right after this break, you're listening to 16U Nationals Baseball right here on the Engine Nationals Baseball Radio Network. I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when it happened. There was a sudden jolt and our submarine crashed on the seafloor. We were in total darkness. That's Dr. Dejana Figueroa, a marine biologist and STEM teacher, talking about a deep sea dive she'll never forget. It's funny, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the ocean. And there I was, two miles below the surface. But as a scientist, you prepare for that. Using our training and a little creativity, we fixed the sub and finished our experiments. The dive was just too important. Every dive gives us glimpses at things few people ever get to see. Glowing creatures, fiery undersea volcanoes. When we got back to the surface, I kissed the ground and called my mom, of course. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that dive for anything. Dr. Figueroa uses her passion for STEM to discover new things and make the world a better place. She can STEM, so can you. Check out She Can STEM for more stories and inspiration. A message from the Ad Council. Hi, 
I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. America, your children have an amazing superpower. That's right. They can help save lives by simply washing. All right, welcome back here. Sorry, cut off the PSA. We're just sorting out the defensive shifts. Andrew Wiener comes into center field. Grant Nikolsky moves from left to center, and Ganeka moves from the mound over to left. I'm not quite sure who's playing shortstop, though. Through all the shuffling, the first two pitches to Nick Weaver are balls, and now the count 3-0. Shortstop still Eli Cohen. Thank you. <laughs> I, you know what? I, I wasn't sure who it was because I originally threw Gineco over there, even though he was going out into the outfield. Next pitch from Weaver. Ball four. And now everybody will advance a base. As the base is loaded, Walk Nationals now up nine to two here as the two out damage continues for this New Jersey team. Never had it where I've had to do. Uh put two at bats in the same inning on a scorecard, but now I will have to. And You've never done that before? I mean, I haven't used oh. scorecards much, so. Um, I was going to say that happens. It tends to happen sometimes. Well, especially with these large lineups, you wouldn't think. Uh, they're not even batting nine. They're batting more than nine. Yeah. Well, it's been a long inning. The Nationals have yes, scored seven runs this inning, and they have six hits as well, four walks also. This team also 6 for 12 with runners in scoring position in today's game, and yeah, that's a that's a good way to score nine runs. 0-1 oh, to Kearns is behind him, and Kavanaugh breaks for home. He's going to slide down. Everybody else will advance. Pitches a ball. Everybody moves up one. Nationals now in double digits, 10-2. to two. That's a wild pitch on the play. Everybody moves up one, and now Kearns even in the count, 1-1. One and one. What a jump by Kavanaugh. He read that almost out of the pitcher's hand. And uh, we are having some control issues so far. Um, we'll see if he could straighten it out here or else it's going to get even more ugly. 1-1 one, one is upstairs now. Two balls and a strike. Yeah, Somebody gave us an umbrella. I, I feel like we should open it, but also at the same time, I feel like it's too late. Everything's already wet. Yeah, I mean, my book, I'm like writing through it. Through it. I probably ruined a couple other games of scorecards. 2-1, plunks Kearns right on the shoulder. So the parade continues for the Nationals as now they've reloaded the bases for Danny Rice. Michael, feel free to use that umbrella for your book. I, You're I'm not going to be able to write. That's okay. I mean, I don't have to enter this as a stat anymore because this is the last game of the season. And uh, you've been keeping track of it on your handy-dandy iPad. My soaked handy-dandy iPad. Here comes Danny Ray, <laughs> so for one with a strikeout and a walk. Now it's not that bad. I'm covering it with the brim of my cap. My The case it has as Reyes swings in. This one is grounded softly over to the catcher. Going to try to make a tag on Bibbo, and they're going to say he got him. <laughs> Bibbo upset, but the umpire saw it in a good play. That's a two-unassisted fielder's choice to finally end the inning. So give me one quick second <laughs> to organize everything that's happened <laughs> so I can wrap it up in time. Okay, so for the Nationals this uh, inning, score eight runs on six hits, four walks, and leave three men on base at the un oh, and eight runs. I think I had said that. At yeah. the end of four, Nationals 10, Legends 2, heading into the top of the fifth with the Legends coming to bat. And Mark Ling back on the mound. You're listening to NJ Nationals Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. I mean, we'll probably stay together. Probably? It's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? 
Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking. Well, we rejoin you here in the top of the fifth inning. Nationals 10, Legends 2. Rodriguez, Young, and Wiener all coming up for the Legends. That's the top of their order against Dylan Martling. And after a strike, next pitch is a ball. So the count now 1-1. One and one. Defensive shift, Reyes is out for Brian Conti. We've seen him play some left field and some third base. So he's back at third. Shortstop is Liam Cavanaugh. Now over at second base is Anthony Alves. This one is tapped over to third. Conti picks it up, fires hard to first. What a throw, and Michelle makes the grab for out number one, and <laughs> Conti's just showing off today, man. What an arm. I mean, just a laser at a first base. Uh, a lot of times when you see those ground balls third, you, you worry they may you know, hit it in the dirt, but that one was just a perfect strike. Yeah, I think he's just taunting everybody. He's like, hey, you should have been playing me <laughs> everywhere all season long. One for two with a big double. And also a good play at third base. And the out that he had, he crushed it to center as well. And uh, Mortling, he had a long rest on the bench. Uh, not long inning by the Nationals. So we'll see if it doesn't look rusty yet, but we'll see if that affects the pitch a little bit. It's also much wetter, the field and the ball and everything else. Now the first pitch from Mortling to Young is upstairs for a ball. Count 1-0. and oh. Young 1-2 for two with a base hit and a ground out. Next pitch to him is in for a strike. And the count now one and one to the number two batter in the Legends order. We're trying to figure out if there is a mercy rule for this game, and there doesn't seem to be a clear consensus. Sometimes it's eight after five, so we'll see what happens here. This one is skied, foul over to the left, and the count one and two. Game is only an hour and 26 minutes old, but <laughs> already four, only four innings in after that really long bottom of the fourth where the Nationals bats just erupted. They've had some good offense lately. The one, two. Cut on a missed strike three, and Dylan Martling continues to dominate on the mound today. Picking up K after K. That's his seventh of the evening. He only had uh, 20 in the season going on to tonight, so it's probably as high, but I'm not 100% sure. At least probably Matias would know better. Yeah, we got to call him. He's down in North Carolina, so I don't know how available he is right now. First pitch is outside for a ball. Now count 1-0. Oh. This one is laced over to the first baseman. Michelle picks it up, bobbles it a little bit, throws it to himself, and taps on the bag for the final out of the inning. Sends him down 1-2-3. No runs, no hits, and nobody left on base at the end of 4.5. Nationals lead at 10-2. Heading into the bottom of the fifth, we're going to see if they send everybody back out on the field. What's going on? It looks like they're going to keep playing, so maybe it'll be 8 after 5.5 innings. But now we're now in the bottom of the fifth inning. Nationals lead it 10 to 2. And the Legends will come to bat in that bottom of the fifth. You're listening to NJ Nationals 16 New Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when it happened. There was a sudden jolt and a submarine crashed on the seafloor. We were in total darkness. That's Dr. Dejana Figueroa, a marine biologist and STEM teacher, talking about a deep sea dive she'll never forget. It's funny, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the ocean, and there I was, two miles below the surface. But as a scientist, you prepare for that. Using our training and a little creativity, we fixed the sub and finished our experiments. The dive was just too important. Every dive gives us glimpses at things few people ever get to see. Glowing creatures, fiery undersea volcanoes, when we got back to the surface, I kissed the ground and called my mom, of course. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that dive for anything. Dr. Figueroa uses her passion for STEM to discover new things and make the world a better place. She can STEM, so can you. Check out She Can STEM for more stories and inspiration. A message from the Ad Council.
Oh, it's going to be hard to top the last inning for the Nationals. You might have caught me singing a little Sugar, We're Going Down at the end of that last inning. And, you know, that's just because I love Fall Out Boy. That's a great song. Fourth track on 2005's, yes, 2005's From Under the Cork Tree. I'm going to self-verify there. <laughs> and, again, it's going to be tough for the Nationals to top their last inning. They scored eight runs and now lead it 10-2. to two, And Martling responded defensively with a 1-2-3 inning. So here comes Andrew Weiner for his second time out. First pitch to Alves is fouled straight back in the count 0-1. Oh, whew, okay, I was right. My credibility as a broadcaster was on the line, and yes, From Under the Cork Tree was released in 2005 for Fall Out Boy. This is the 15th year anniversary of that album as this misses inside Alves in the count one and one. Man, I talk about a lot of music on broadcast usually, <laughs> especially in Florida. With uh, I was hanging out with my PA guy, Glenn, all the time. Well, I mean, because we were both working the game, and he played some excellent tunes down there at Pat Thomas Stadium as the next pitch misses outside to Alves in the count two and one. Played a lot of Bruno Mars and really got, got everybody going. <laughs> two one is skidded foul and the count even now at two and two. Bottom five bases clear. Alves, Muller, Martling coming up for the Nationals this inning against the Legends. Nationals have secured a 10 to two lead. They scored one run in the first, one in the third. We're chipping away and then erupted for eight in the fourth inning. They have 10 runs on nine hits, one error, and six left. The Legends, two runs on four hits, four errors, and six men left aboard. Wiener fires the 2-2, and this one is grounded sharply and under the glove of Moses and into left. So that's going to go as another error, this time on the third baseman, and Alves is aboard to lead off the inning. We've seen some dem uh, defensive miscues for the Legends in this game. You know, obviously it's not the reason for all 10 runs, but it has contributed to the Nationals' large lead. First pitch to Matt Muller is in for a strike to count 0-1. One. One Actually, so despite the five errors, all 10 runs have been earned. 1-0 counts to Muller, 0-4-1 with the line out and a walk. He's also scored a run and... Andrew Wiener steps off the bag, looks over at first. New first baseman is Dylan Gineco. As the pitch hit high in the air in the infield. And that's where, all right, okay, that's where Jake Wiener went. He went over to second base, and he makes the grab for out number one. Just musical infield right now. <laughs> yeah, everybody's moving around. I'm going to have to take a quicker scan. And Rodriguez has moved himself over to center field. Okay. So Rodriguez in center, Nikolski in left as a pitch low for a ball to Martling in the count one and zero. And over to second is Jake Weiner. There we go. So now everything's set up. Martling 0 for two with a line out and a strikeout. That line out was smoked over to left field and a nice play by Nikolski to retire him. Wiener steps off the bag, does not throw, but Alves <laughs> dives back anyway. Guess he wanted to make sure his jersey was dirty in a 10-2 victory. <laughs> Bottom five with one away. Ground ball gets him out of the inning. Runner goes, pitches high for a ball. The third down to second is not in time. So Alves is in with another swipe bag for the Nationals. And Martling, the only hitter in the Nationals lineup to not get on yet. Um, I think seven, I believe all but two have a hit. One of them has, a, has gotten on a walk. So Martling looking to get on here. Everybody you're right has at least been on bases. This one has popped up. He might not get on this time. Wiener over at second is there and makes the grab. And that's two outs on a couple of pop-ups over to the shortstop. And now here comes Sam Michelle, who's one for two with a fly out and a big time base hit that knocked it a run. Actually cleared the bases, but he doesn't get all of the RBI because of the fact that there was an error by the right fielder. So two away, first pitch to Michelle is upstairs and outside. A little bit off speed in the count 1-0. Again, the last game for the season for the Nationals, always bittersweet here, bittersweet on the broadcast as well as we close the book on another big time national season on the Nationals radio network as Michelle swings and misses the count 1-1. One one. 
This is our second year that we've broadcasted. We've done every season that the Nationals have had during that time. We've done, we do 14U in the spring and then 18 in, or rather more like 17 and 16 in the summer. And the same two teams in the fall expanded the broadcast. This one's fouled away, count one and two to have two different channels now, one for the 18U, one for the 16U, and we're working on getting some games on Twitch. The 16U had a game on Twitch earlier in the season. Actually, we tried to get one on today, but we, we couldn't get the camera <laughs> balanced. The big problem is the chain link fences. It's hard to get the camera to look through and have a clear image, and we just couldn't get the tripod right there. I'm pretty glad we didn't end up trying to do it because of that rain. Absolutely, one, two, and this one hits the lip of the infield and goes into right for a base hit. Alves is going to round third and score. It's an RBI single for Sam Michelle, and that's just kind of how this game's been going for the Legends today. I mean, just a couple of tough breaks here, and that one, nothing the first baseman Ganeko could have done there. Just bounced right off the lip of the grass. But again, a two-out RBI for the Nationals. That's been the big story of the game. So now here comes Conti, third trip to the plate. Takes a fastball that zipped high in the count 1-0. Conti one for two with an RBI double and a fly out. Both balls have been hit right on the screws. And the 1-0. In for a strike right on the outside edge. And the count now two balls and no strikes to the Nationals third baseman. Michelle already with two steals today. Now a big lead off of first. Takes a crow hop as this one is belted to right field. Young is there and makes the grab for the final out of the inning, but Conti hits the ball to all three fields today in the outfield. One of them dropping for a double, this one to fly out to end the inning. No runs, or uh, rather one run on one hit and one man left aboard. Uh, at the end of five, Nationals lead 11 to two, heading into the top of the six with the Legends coming to bat. You're listening to NJ Nationals 16 U Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. sudden jolt and our submarine crashed on the seafloor. We were in total darkness. That's Dr. Dejana Figueroa, a marine biologist and STEM teacher, talking about a deep sea dive she'll never forget. It's funny, when I was a kid, I was afraid of the ocean, and there I was, two miles below the surface. But as a scientist, you prepare for that. Using our training and a little creativity, we fixed the sub and finished our experiments. The dive was just too important. Every dive gives us glimpses at things few people ever get to see. Glowing creatures, fiery undersea volcanoes. When we got back to the surface, I kissed the ground and called my mom, of course. But you know what? I wouldn't trade that dive for anything. Dr. Figueroa uses her passion for STEM to discover new things and make the world a better place. She can STEM, so can you. Check out She Can STEM for more stories and inspiration. A message from the Ad Council. Hi, I'm Danica Patrick. Watching my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. <laughs> Busting out all the pop punk hits. Ocean Avenue now coming out. DJ Mike Carter Jr. Looks like over on the picture. speaker. It's been playing some sick tunes all day long. A lot of Zeppelin pregame. And it, it's just been uphill from there. And who thought it could be more uphill from Zeppelin? But he's found a way to do it. New pitcher on the mound is Sam Michelle. That'll do it for Dylan Martling, who swaps places with him. He'll go to first. And Brian Conti out of the game. And now over back at third base is Danny Reyes, Anthony Bibbo. Back at short, Michelle's first pitch to Dylan Ganeko in for a strike in the count 0-1. We'll give you Martling's final line. Oh, my goodness. This might be the best pitching line of a Nationals pitcher this season. Martling fires in, or rather Michelle. See, I'm so used to him pitching. <laughs> Misses low. And the count now, one ball and one strike. So for Mich uh, Martling, see, now mixing their names up all around. Five innings, two runs, both earned. 
as this one is put in play to short. Bibbo picks it up. Fields fires high to first, but Martling's height. Works to his advantage there as he makes the grab and puts him down for round number one. So now we'll give you Martling's total again. Five innings, 69 pitches, 44 for strikes at 63.8% if you're keeping track at home. Two runs, both earned on four hits, two walks, and a big seven strikeouts, including three with the bases loaded and nobody out in the top of the second inning to get out of a jam. So now one away here, top six. Here's Oliver Colhenny, who's one for two with a fly out. And a double also drove in a run, count one and oh. Another Nationals team warming up in right field. There's going to be a younger group that comes out and plays later on. I don't know who the other team's going to be. I believe I saw them warming up behind us in running, although that could just be some people at the park uh, enjoying, enjoying the really nice weather we have out. Yeah, right, absolutely <laughs> stellar, spectacular. And two balls and no strikes in this rainy, gloomy, gross <laughs> Jersey fall afternoon. Sounds like the time of the year for that weather. 2-0, <laughs> hit in the air to right field. Kearns coming in on it. And makes the catch now for out number two. Well, two quick outs for Michelle. And Sam has pitched this season. One and two, only four and a third innings pitched. So now five total. Four strikeouts and eight earned runs. So he struggled in the season, but now has gotten two quick outs here in the top of the sixth. Here's Riley Moses, who's reached base safely twice. He's been hit and walked. And the first pitch to him is outside for ball count 1-0. In the last game of the season, you have a nine-run lead. Like, why not give him another rep uh, at the end of the season? It, you know, it's, a, it's, just, it's not a tournament game as well, so you know, it counts for pride, but it doesn't count for anything like a trophy or anything like that. Pitch misses high, count 2-0. Oh, yeah, and I mean, you want to try to get everybody in, of course. And, you know, Michelle deserves it. He's a talented player, and... He's gotten some opportunities down on the mound this season. Now getting a chance to prove himself a little more as he misses downstairs and count now 3-0. And, and a big story for the Nationals, two out run production. All eight runs in the fourth were two outs and also the one in the bottom of the fifth. 3-0. Strike on the outside corner and Michelle bounces back a bit. Now count three balls and one strike. Marling playing really deep over at first base. On that right side, as this one misses low to Moses, so that'll have to pull Martling in as he's going to have to hold him on. And it's a two-out walk with Eli Cohen coming to bat. He's 0-for-1 with a walk and a strikeout. Michelle looks over at first to throw, not in time. It came pretty quickly, but Moses had the read on it the whole way, able to dive back. Nationals 11 runs on 10 hits, one error, seven left on base. The Legends two runs on four hits, five errors. And six left the board as the pitch to Cohen right down the pipeline for a strike. And the count 0-1. Hey, Moses leading off the bag pretty hard over at first base, or pretty long over at first base, I should say, as the next pitch is high in the count 1-1. One one. Got about 10, 11 feet off the bag out there. And the 1-1. One outside and now the count two balls and a strike Michelle with 14 pitches only five for strikes but again got two quick outs before a five pitch walk to Riley Moses now Michelle from the stretch sets delivers and misses up and outside again in the count now three and one to his second consecutive batter lights are on as the sun's coming down here 5 47 p.m. And East Hanover, New Jersey as a fastball clips the inside edge and now the count full at three and two. 11 to two Nationals lead over the Legends in the top of the six with two outs. A full count with Riley Moses on first base and Eli Cohen at the plate. Next pitch, strike three. Sam Michelle gets him looking right on the outside corner and that'll wrap up the top of the sixth inning. No runs, no hits, one walk, no errors and one man left aboard at the end of five and a half. Nationals lead at 11 to two. And the Nationals going to come to bat in the bottom of the sixth inning. You're listening to 16U NJ Nationals Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> this song, fantastic. <laughs> we'll be right back. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. 
Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? Sure. I mean, we'll probably stay together. Probably? <laughs> it's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and Ad Council. I was in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean when it happened. There was a sudden jolt, and our submarine crashed. Sorry about the choppiness with the PSA. It's just rocking out to little Mr. Brightside coming out over the loudspeakers as the Nationals' bats have been loud, up 11-2 to two here. Now the top of the order back up. Muller, Kavanaugh, Bibbo. And muller has been unstoppable today. Two for two, a couple singles, a walk, and three runs scored. First pitch to him is cut on a miss in the count 0-1. We'd like to say an absolutely fire play list today. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Well, I mean, that's that's just, that's just how Mike Carter Jr. rolls, man. Everything he does is straight up fire. <laughs> He was a great. He was a great high school quarterback back when, <laughs> back when we were everyone field high school. Of course, I didn't play football, but it was fun to watch him play. 0-1 is breaking ball down and outside. Count now, one ball and one strike. So bottom of the six, Nationals with the big lead. I wonder if they score a run if they'll end it. So that'd be 10 in the middle of the sixth as this one bounces against the backstop and the count two and one. I'm not rooting for the game to end. I'm just trying to figure it out because it's, it's always difficult in youth baseball games to figure out the conclusion. Like, we were all caught off guard this morning with the 18U. The game just ended after five, and we didn't even really hit the drop dead time. 2-1. Hit in the air to left center field. That one is sinking quickly, though, but the center fielder, Rodriguez, gets there in time, and... Muller retired for the first time in the ball game for the first out of this inning. Yeah, and even if, it, I mean, there is, they get up by 10 runs, it's the only saving half an inning, really. I mean, or I guess the rest of this inning, rest of this half inning and the next half inning, because we are in the bottom of the sixth. All right, we'll play seven here if it goes the distance. Here comes Kavanaugh, two for three, a couple of base hits and a fly out. He's also scored and driven in a pair of runs as he takes one low in the count one and oh. So these, uh, for these guys, it's their last at bats. Likely last at bat of the season. You never know what's going to happen, but it's likely that these are the last slicks of the season. One end on a high note. Next pitch to Kavanaugh is a strike on the outside corner, and the count now one and one. So legends didn't shuffle around this inning, so that's good. Everybody staying put in their positions, making my life a lot easier. <laughs> Bottom six, one out, one one is popped up on the right side. Gineco gets called off by Jake Wiener, who catches it and puts him down for out number two. Two batters, two outs. Here comes Anthony Bippo, who's 0 for 2 with a walk, ground out, and to fly out as well. He's also driven in to run off of that ground ball. Drove in the first run of the ball game back in the first. So lefty-righty matchup. Wiener's come in, hasn't allowed any runs. He... Allowed some inherited runners to score, but nothing is charged to his name. First pitch to him. In for a strike right down the middle to Bibbo in the count now 0-1. And yeah, so it'll probably be Bibbo's last and bat of the season. The oratory prep left-hander. Trying to end on a high note as he takes a fastball, or rather a changeup. Outside in the count now 0-2. Two outs, bottom six, no balls, two strikes from Andrew Wiener on the mound with Anthony Bibbo at the plate. Nationals with an 11-2 lead here late in the ballgame. And the 0-2. Downstairs, below the knees, and the count now 1-2. And, and the air continuing to chill as the sun goes down. Not like the sun was helping us out anyway. <laughs> hiding behind the clouds all evening long. 1-2. Curveball sails up and away. A bit of an early release point for Wiener that time and evens it up at 2-2. Two and two. Change of baseballs. The rain has stopped, thankfully, at least, but 
you know, everything around us is soaked. I think the pieces of paper are stuck to the table. <laughs> I don't think I'll be taking that up. Usually I do, but I think I'll just go in the garbage. Yeah, I'll just throw them out. <laughs> Deuces wild. Two balls, two strikes, two outs. The pitch outside, and the count now full, three and two. And two outs doesn't always mean the end of the inning, especially in this game. The Nationals, again, with nine runs with two outs. So a big payoff pitch for Wiener here. He deals, and Bibbo wastes it as he fouls it off over... <laughs> off the third base fence, and the count remains full. Like Bibbo pointed, uh, calling calling where he's going to hit it, maybe. Uh, kind of towards that that, foul, that uh, light pole in right set right field, right center field. Yeah, just a little fun for his teammates. I don't think he's trying to show every, <laughs> anybody up in the field. I don't think so. See if he hits it there. 3-2. Well, we won't have a chance to as that one goes in the dirt. Ball four, so Bibbo... This likely last plate appearance of the season works himself a walk and will allow Nick Weaver to come up to bat. Weaver won for two with a double, a walk, and a flyout. He's also driven in a run. Right hander up at the plate with Bibbo taking a big lead off the bag at first base. Takes a jump, a secondary. That pitch was a late breakdown. Good change up there for Wiener. Gets it in for a strike, and the count 0-1 to Weaver. And good to see the offense for the Nationals pick up here. In two of their last three games, they've eclipsed double digits as this one is outside, and the count now one ball, one strike. They beat Roberto Clemente by a score of 15 to nothing. Five days ago, and now are ahead in this one, 11 to two. This offering from Wiener is up and outside, and the count now two balls and one strike. Barring a massive comeback, four outs left in this game, and again, this might be the best baseball that this Nationals team has played all year long. 2-1 is hit right up the middle and dropping in for a base hit. The ball dies in the grass a little bit, making it tough for Rodriguez to play, but he's able to get in front and keep Bibbo at second base. The two-out base hit for Nick Weaver, and the Nationals continuing to knock on the door with two outs. <laughs> now here comes Kearns, one for two, the fly out of single. He's also hit by a pitch, almost gets hit by that one, and that one's down and in. Count 1-0. and oh. Kearns is not driven in to run, but he has crossed the plate in today's affair. Well, it's only a matter of time before we heard about dog at the park. This one is low, and the count now 2-0. and oh. I'm used to John Pervetti and Victoria Cook bringing their dog Dakota to the games, but I haven't seen them at any game because John's not really allowed to come if there's a team with Seton Hall prep kids on, so he hasn't been around, but Missed that dog. 2-0. This one sits sharply on the ground to second. Wiener picks it up, bobbles it, gets it back in his glove, fires to first, and puts him down for the final out of the inning. So the Nationals fail the score, but get two hits and leave two men aboard. At the end of six, they lead at 11-2. Last looks for the legends coming up in the top of the seventh inning. You're listening to NJ Nationals 16U Baseball right here on the New Jersey Nationals Baseball Radio Network. my nieces grow, play, and learn is amazing, but not every child gets to be carefree. One in six kids in the U.S. are hungry. This breaks my heart, and it's something that Feeding America is working to change. Each year, the Feeding America network of food banks rescues billions of pounds of good food that would have gone to waste and gives it to families in need. To help, visit feedingamerica.org. Brought to you by Feeding America and the Ad Council. America, your children have an amazing superpower. That's right, they can help save lives by simply washing their hands. Just 20 seconds of thorough hand washing after they've coughed or sneezed or been outside can help fight against the dastardly spread of germs. Armed with only soap and water and hands, your superhero can protect you, your family, and everyone out there in America land. Amazing! Find out more at coronavirus.gov. A message from the CDC and the Ad Council. No word in the English language is less convincing than probably. Are you sure we should get matching tattoos on our first date? 
Sure. I mean, we'll probably stay together. Probably? <laughs> it's been 23 minutes since I ate. I can probably swim. Uh, you should wait 30 minutes. Mm, okay, now tell me what to do. Cannonball! Cramp! Oh, I have a cramp. I can probably hit the green from here. Probably. Can I get a mulligan? Ready to go? Hey, are you sure you're okay to drive? Yeah, I'm pretty sober. Yeah, I'm probably okay. Probably okay isn't okay, especially when it comes to drinking and driving. If you're drinking, call a cab, a car, or a friend. Buzz driving is drunk driving. A message brought to you by NHTSA and Ad Council. New arm in for the Nationals, Liam Cavanaugh. His father just <laughs> informed us he hasn't pitched since Little League, so we'll see how this goes here. Dylan Martling still at first over at second. Anthony Albies with Bibbo at short and Brian Conti back in at third base outfield. Oh, actually, no, Sam Michelle now in left field. So it's a good thing we looked up and checked. Kern stays in right, Muller stays in center. <clears throat> and what could be the final three outs of the Nationals season? Top seven, nine run lead, Nationals up 11 to two, and Kavanaugh, right hander in the pitch, he's gonna face eight, nine, and 10 for the Legends, and Jake Wiener, Bryce Megden, and Grant Nikolski. First pitch is belted high and foul out of play on the right side, and the count 0 and 1. For this part of the Legends lineup, they are combined 0 for 6 with three strikeouts. So Marlin with five strong innings, and Michelle with a shutout six, and now turning to Kavanaugh, see if he can get the final three outs. 0-1, does not reach the plate, misses down and out, and they count one ball and one strike. We have been told that uh, Kavanaugh does have a knuckleball, so we'll see if he utilizes there to try to freeze the batter. Man, his dad was saying he's got that knuckle, let's see if it breaks out, and <laughs> that kind of looked like one there as it's fouled off. Count one and two is a little hard to see because the image, is, uh, the image of the ball coming in is obscured by the umpire. That's just where we're sitting. I mean, he's got to be there for his positioning. And the one, two. There's, that was definitely a knuckleball. <laughs> and uh, <laughs> didn't have much control of that one. Ends up behind Sweetener in the count now. Two balls and two strikes. Why not break it out in a nine-run game? Why you know, not? Just, just to test it out. Maybe it becomes an effective weapon. It's a fun pitch. One more straight and gets fouled off out of play, and we'll have another 2 2. Two balls, two strikes, top seven, nobody out. Base is empty. Again, Nationals with a nine run lead. Up ahead, 11 to 2 here, and they do manage to hold on to that lead as the knuckleball gets him to swing and miss. Strike three. Kavanaugh <laughs> does uncork the knuckleball, and he gets himself the first K of the season, his first strikeout. Since probably elementary school. <laughs> so now Bryce Megden steps to the plate. He's over two with a strikeout and a ground out. And Kavanaugh with a slow leg kick fires in, misses high, and the count one and zero. Can't wait till the end of the inning when he does like you know celebration for ending the game, and I want to see what that is. That's what I'm really most interested in this inning. Oh yeah. <laughs> Pitching exclusively from the stretch, the one zero. Comes in right down the middle for a strike in the count now one and one. And yeah, if you're a position player, why not? Why not develop a knuckleball? If you could come in later, it could be a valuable bullpen arm. You know, you could do whatever. You could Tim Wakefield it once in a while. <laughs> you can already see the cut for tweet, the position player pitching. And not only pitching, but throwing knuckleballs. This one in right down the heart of the plate for a strike, and he's jumped ahead now one and two. He's not looking bad for someone who's been pitching so long. He looks pretty sharp. Like if you could, fool, if, you, if I didn't have the stats, you could fool me thinking he's a regular pitcher for this team. Yeah, I mean he's got smooth delivery, repeatable delivery, and he's got a strong arm. He plays the middle infield. One, two, knuckleball <laughs> swung on and missed strike three. Kavanaugh <laughs> with back-to-back -back two strike knuckleballs, and his teammates are enjoying it from the field. Two strikeouts here, and now the legends down to their final out. That just made him just fooled it really badly. Uh, that's a good knuckleball. That's a good knuckleball. Yeah, and especially in the cold, you think it would be like a freezing up. I remember thinking of like R.A. Dickey in Toronto. Right. But the knuckleball is like working pretty effectively despite the cold weather. 
Pitch missed low for a ball count. We're, we're laughing because we're I'm not I'm just not expecting to see <laughs> that kind of pitch out of him. Or really out of anybody at this level. Spins the fastball right on the outside corner and the count now one and one. Yeah, Kavanaugh's coming dealing. Twelve pitches, eight for strikes. Have you seen anyone throw a knuckleball yet in this league? Or no. I no, I haven't. So this is the first one that you've seen. Yep, I've been doing this for two years. Haven't seen one. This one is line. Right to Alves, leaps in the air, makes the catch, and that'll do it as the line out puts an exclamation point on the end of the national season. They win this one by a score of 11-2. to two. So the Nationals with a big win today, move above 500, or move to 500 for the season and close out an improbable year. As we're able to play not only in the summer, but the fall as well, get some broadcasts up for you, and yeah, bring you some baseball. The Nationals played a tremendous game. Your national of the game is Dylan Martling. Who had seven strikeouts and five innings of two-run ball. Only allowed four hits and two walks in the Nationals' offensive player of the game. We'll go to Liam Cavanaugh as well, who came in and also did a really good job. Uh, on the mound to close things out, he has two for four. The run scored and two runs batted in. Michael, thank you so much for joining us for the past uh, last few games of the season. Of course, I really enjoyed uh, calling this. Uh, it's a great experience, and I was happy that Matias did put this up and you know had an Ithaca College student as well do this. Um, Ithaca College Network uh, growing strong. We've only had Ithaca College students or graduates do these games, which is that's not on purpose. It's just how it kind of ended up. But, uh, yeah, that'll wrap up the season. Thank you so much for tuning in. Uh, we had the last 18U game earlier today, now the last 16U game of the season, and it's been a great year. The Nationals 18U team finished the game above 509 and 8 and now this 16U squad also comes in and hits it at 500. From all of us here with the Nationals, the big thank you shout-out to Vittoria Cook and John Brevetti for their great administrative work and coaching with the teams, for all the coaches in the National Organization, for Matias Wildman and Michael Mimis, I'm Zach Smolin signing off. We'll see you in the spring. Hopefully we play in the spring with some more Nationals broadcasts and maybe more ways to view and listen to the games. It's been a real treat bringing the baseball to you guys. And stay frosty. We'll see you in the spring.